Hello, everybody. This is our first lesson with Little House on the Prairie. Um, we are our last book that will take us through the end of the year, and I'm going to be doing some video lessons for each part of the book. Today's lesson is a pre-lesson about the book. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is the difference between biographies and autobiographies. Little House on the Prairie is an autobiography. Um, the author, Laura Ingalls Wilder, wrote this book, the second in a series of eight, about her life growing up in the Plains states and the Midwest states in America. Um, she was born in Wisconsin and they moved from Wisconsin first to Kansas, uh, where our book takes place, to Homestead. We're gonna learn more about homesteading later. Uh, and then <clears throat> some things happened and they didn't make it on the homestead and they moved back to Wisconsin for a while and she lived in Minnesota and in North and South Dakota. Eventually, her parents had a homestead in South Dakota and a place called DeSmet. So we're gonna learn all about pioneer life, which will help you be ready for Nebraska history. None of Laura's life took place in Nebraska, but she did live all around Nebraska. We're gonna talk about plants and animals, building log cabins, and crops that you would grow, and Native Americans, and, and everything you would find in this part of the country. So what we're gonna learn about will help you next year in fourth grade. It's a wonderful book, lots of exciting parts, lots of building. It is written by a woman. However, I find that boys, most of you like the book maybe even better than the girls do, as this one has a lot to do with living on the frontier life and some scary parts about Indians. Oh and a wildfire and wolves. But the book is an autobiography. A biography is a book written about someone by someone else. So they might have interviewed them or read a lot of information about them or talked to their relatives and then wrote a book um, if the person's alive, they have to ask their permission, but if they're dead, like Laura is, um, they uh, would have asked the family's permission. So to overview her whole life, I think is important before we jump into a portion of her early life. So I'm going to read to you a book called Laura Ingalls Wilder, a biography and this book will tell you about her whole life from the time she was born until the time she died and about when she was writing about our books, which are not in her autobiography books. So we're gonna read this and the camera's not super big, so I'm going to read it and then I will show you the pages. Laura Elizabeth Ingalls was born on February 7th, 1864 seven near Pepin, Wisconsin to Caroline and Charles Ingalls. Her sister Mary was two years older. The family lived in a big cabin in the big woods. Wolves, bears, panthers, and foxes lived in the woods too. But Laura and Mary felt safe with Ma and Pa. That's what people called their parents back in the 1800s. Ma and Pa. In the evenings, they sat by the fire. Ma read to them. Pa sang and played jolly tunes on his fiddle. He made everyone laugh. Laura, Ma raised vegetables, cooked, sewed, and kept house. Pa hunted game and grew crops for food. Often Pa spoke about owning land where plowing would be easier. He dreamed of farming in the prairie. Whoops, sorry. There's the picture. In 
Pa sold the farm. The Ingalls packed their belongings in a covered wagon and moved west. They tracked for they traveled for many months. We're going to learn about what a covered wagon looked like, how big it was. Wait till you see how small it was, and what it was like to live and camp and ride around in those things. During the long journey, Laura listened to Pa tell stories by the campfire. There they are traveling and camping. There we go. Wanted to skip pages. When they came to Kansas at last, Laura saw land that looked like a sea of grass. And this is what Nebraska would have looked like at the time as well. Even some parts of Nebraska still look like this. Ocean of grass. Pa built a cabin. In 1870, Laura's sister Carrie was born there. Unknown to Pa, the cabin was on Osage Indian land and the Indians were angry. At night, Laura heard war cries that frightened her more than wolves howling. Pa had no choice and no claim to the land, and the family moved back to Wisconsin. But Pa missed the prairie, and in 1874, they moved near Walnut Grove, Minnesota. Pa built a dugout house made of sod and willow branches. Laura thought the house was strange, but Ma said it would be snug. So there is Laura in the doorway of the log cabin, and there's the dugout house. Can you see how it's built into the side of a hill? Yeah. Can you imagine bugs and snakes falling through the ceiling right on top of you? Mary helped Ma with chores and baby Carrie. Laura played on the, on the prairie and fished nearby in Plum Creek. When a school was started in town, Laura was afraid she couldn't play anymore. Soon she discovered she liked school, especially reading and writing. Pa expected to make a lot of money from his wheat crop. So he built a real house. It had yellow pine boards, glass windows, and china doorknobs. Laura had never seen such a fine house. And there she is fishing and going to the schoolhouse. And there's their real house. Much different than that dugout. But something's going to happen, and you've heard about them in our um, If I Survived book. But during the summer, grasshoppers invaded the prairie and ate the wheat. The next summer, the grasshoppers came again. Pa had no wheat to sell. The family had to leave the fine house. Look at the grasshoppers eating everything. They even ate the leather reins that the horses used and the clotheslines and the broom that Ma's holding, everything. Now, the chickens like the dead grasshoppers. They ate them for food. More trouble followed. Laura's baby brother, Freddie, died soon after he was born. Because Pa couldn't find work, the family had, no, had to move many times. Everyone was sad. But Pa played his fiddle in the evenings. Um, its sweet melodies comforted them. They were also cheered by the birth of Laura's sister, Grace, in 1877. Then the family moved back to Walnut Grove, where Paul worked at odd jobs. There they are. Singing. Listening to Paul. One winter, Mary caught a fever and lost her eyesight. From then on, Laura became Mary's eyes. When they walked on the prairie, Laura described its changing seasons the sunsets, and everything she saw to Mary. Laura was learning to make pictures with words. And I would agree, her descriptions in her books are very, very, very much word pictures that you can see in your head, even if you didn't know what the prairie looked like. In 1879, Pa found a job in Silver Lake, Dakota Territory, which is right on the border between North and South Dakota, working in a store for the railroad. When the railroad construction camp closed up for the winter, he became its watchman. The family lived in a surveyor's house. 
During the long winter's ni winter nights, Pa told stories. Laura never tired of Pa's wonderful stories. Laura read aloud from books and newspapers, always saving part of the story for the next night. Everyone wanted to know what happened next. In the spring, the Ingalls moved to Desmet, a new town in Dakota Territory. Pa no longer dreamed of farming on the prairie, and he promised Ma they would not have to move again. There they are in the great big snowdrifts, which is Dakota. Even today, they still have lots and lots more snow than we get. Laura was Laura was happy living near um, living near school, but even so, school school was often even so sorry school was often closed because of deep snow, and Laura had to study at home, like you do, only without any internet. She read her family's books over and over and borrowed others. She wrote poems in little books she made herself. In the winter of 1880, blizzard after blizzard swept across the prairie. The town was running out of food. Two young men, Almanzo Wilder and Cap Garland, made a dangerous trip in sleighs across the prairie, frozen prairie to get wheat from a farmer who had a big supply. They kept the, the townsfolk from starving. Laura thought Almanzo was a real hero. There they are, going across. And that is the same winter as the book we were reading, um, I Survived, the school children's blizzard, took place during that particular winter. Because she was a good student, Laura was asked to teach at a prairie school. She was lonely, away from her family. One Friday, Almanzo surprised her by coming to Honest Lady to take her home. She stayed with her family all weekend. Then Almanzo took her back on Sunday, and he did the same every weekend. Laura taught at two more prairie schools, but like most frontier girls, she never graduated from high school. She loved Almanzo, and whom she called Manly, and they married in 1885. So there's the teeny tiny little one room schoolhouse where she's teaching and um, him coming up to get her. But they were very small. And almost nobody graduated from high school out in the frontier part of the world of, of America in those days. A year later, their daughter was born. Laura named her Rose after the bright pink flowers that bloomed on the prairie. Laura and Manley were happy. Soon, though, the Wilders suffered hard times. Hail, drought, and fierce windstorms ruined their wheat crops and made them poor. Their baby son died soon after he was born, and a serious illness left Manly weak, and his heart would never be the same again. To help, to help him recover, Laura and Manly moved to Minnesota, where his family was, then they went to Florida where it was warm because they felt that that would help him be healthier and breathe better. They returned to Desmet, but life on the prairie was much too hard. So in 1894, they decided to try farming in a milder climate of the Ozark Mountains down in southern Missouri and Arkansas. They traveled to Missouri where they found lush fields and tree-covered mountains. Laura kept a notebook about the journey. A week before reaching Mansfield, Missouri, she sent a letter describing her trip to a newspaper back in Desmet. It was published, and Laura proudly wrote in the margin, the first thing I ever had pum published. Okay, there they are with Baby Rose and their beautiful big dog, and you can see the flowers that she was named after. And there they are moving to um, Mansfield, Missouri. And Rose has grown up a lot from this picture. So you can probably 10 years later. With $100 Laura had earned from sewing, she and Manley made a down payment on land near Mansfield. She called it Rocky Ridge Farm. Can you imagine $100 was their down payment? Times were different. In the gentler climate of the Ozarks, Laura raised chickens and grew fruit trees. Soon the farms Soon the farm prospered and Laura would never have to move again. Once the farm was well established, 
Laura decided to share her knowledge about farming. In 1911, she started writing articles for a paper called the Missouri Ruralist, and she soon had a weekly column called As a Farm Wife Thinks. A few years later, Rose, who was now a well-known writer, urged her mother to write for national magazines, and Laura took her advice and did it. And there they are. She's feeding the chickens on the farm with her husband. And there she is writing down a recipe that she's cooking to be published in a magazine. You can tell she's getting older. Her hair is getting awfully gray here. But Laura wanted to do more than that. She wanted to write about her life as a pioneer girl. Her memories and Pa's stories were just too good to be altogether lost. She wanted to do some writing that would count. She wrote and revised a story called Pioneer Girl many times. Finally, a book company wanted to publish it, but only if she rewrote it for the children. But she never was going to be a children's author. Isn't that interesting? She did. And in 1932, when Laura was 65 years old, her first book, Little House in the Big Woods, was published. Readers loved it, but they wanted to know what happened next. So Laura wrote seven more books about her family. She was pleased that many people enjoyed her stories. Laura was as good at writing stories as Pa had been at telling them. And there is where she did most of her writing at her desk. Not like we do today. In, in 1949, Manley died at the age of 92. Although Laura was lonely without him, she kept answering fan letters and seeing visitors. Reflecting about her hard but rewarding life, she wrote, It is still best to be honest and truthful, to make the most of what we have, to be happy with simple pleasures and to be cheerful and have courage when things go wrong. Laura died on February 10th, 1957, three days after her 90th birthday. Laura once said she had written her stories because I wanted the children now to understand more about the beginning of things, to know what is behind the things they see and what it is that made America as they know it. There she is talking to some young children visiting her. And you can see the farmhouse in the back. Rocky Ridge Farm. Right. Her other books are um, Little House in the Big Woods is the first one. Then comes our book, Little House on the Prairie. Um, and she wrote a book called Farmer Boy, which is about her husband's growing up on a farm in New York State. Um, then back to herself on the banks of Plum Creek. And uh, that's in Minnesota. By the shores of Silver Lake, which was in Dakota Territory. The long winter, little town on the prairie, and these happy golden years all happened in DeSmet, South Dakota. Um, and the first four years were about when she was first married to her husband, Summer and DeSmet, and then parts in Minnesota. Um, Laura wrote eight little house books. Her ninth book, The First Four Years, was published in 1971 from notes that Laura had kept but had never been able to get the book written before she died. The books have been published in more than 40 different languages. Uh, so... In 1954, the American Library Association created the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award to honor any author going forward or illustrator whose books had made a substantial and lasting contribution to literature for children. And of course, Laura received the first award. So that is the biography of Laura Ingalls Wilder. And a biography is interesting, but it does just tell kind of factual things about their lives. Um, an autobiography is more interesting because you get to have her feelings, her descriptions of the things that she sees around her, and her interaction with the other characters in the book. So I think it's just a lot more interesting. And I think you're going to love this book. 
So this video will go all out on Tuesday, March 31st. And also on Tuesday, March 31st, we'll do the first chapter. So the first day we're going to have the video about her biography and an autobiography, what those mean. And then we'll go ahead and start on the first chapter with our vocab and our trifold. So after you watch this, answer the questions on the question in the seesaw activity. And then you'll want to click on the next seesaw activity, Little House on the Prairie, Chapter 1.